January the 30th, 2017. The most amazing headlines are now coming out about the Pacific Ocean. Government is starting to declare a disaster. It's our worst nightmare. Japan is living it for six years. We've been living in denial. We know it's everywhere. We know it's been recorded. We don't need a Geiger counter in our hand to tell us what's there. It doesn't go away. We know it showed up. We know it was incredible numbers. Now they're saying the Pacific Ocean is dead. They're about to die. Radioactive rain causes 130 schools just after the Fukushima nuclear power plants melted down. Yet the rain in North America had 10 times more radioactivity. And they didn't warn us. They didn't give us the ability to protect ourselves or to keep our children home that day or keep our pets indoors. They didn't give us those opportunities, even though they indulged in that themselves. Hillary Clinton said she wasn't going outdoors and, and, and other things to her staff and, and advised them not to do the same to do the same thing. We know Tokyo is destroyed forever, but forever takes a while to manifest, but it does manifest. This is not a maybe. Just spraying in the radioactive water from reactor five and six onto a China syndrome nuclear meltdown was a death sentence for their country and the Pacific and most of the planet. Just by that one act. By what? That one panic, by that one public relation entity, nuclear, trying to cover up its event, its catastrophic nightmare. Yes, the nuclear is to blame, but it's the PR firms that allowed it to get to this point and and covered it up. It's the public relation firms. It's your government and your universities, your professors and every university has sat by and allowed the lies to be perpetrated, the blatant lies. That's who we that's who is history will blame. It'll be the people you hired to protect you, to let you know the radiation was coming in, those organizations like the EPA and Health Canada for North America that we put our faith into, we gave them the monetary, we gave them the authority, we gave them the equipment, and they betrayed us when the time came to do their job. They, at minimum, are guilty of derelict of duty that has resulted in an extinction event for North America, the Pacific Ocean and the planet in general, the insects, the birds, the mammals, the animals, and the thousands, the millions of species in the Pacific Ocean are down to a tiny fraction in less than six years. This is not over-dramatizing. This is under-dramatizing it. This is not taking it out of context. This is 
going way down the rabbit hole and looking at the many incredible facets and those minutiae of the minutiae of the minutiae. Like the bacteria, like the pollen. All of these are factors in every aspect of your life, whether you understand it or are willing to admit to it. The government is just a tiny handful of people that have made it impossible for everybody else to have a normal life. It's a tiny handful of people that you can point your finger at and say that person, that person, that person that have destroyed it for 7 billion people. But those people you point at couldn't get a job in the real world. The only job they can get is a job where they mass murder populations. It's all they know. It's why they were born. They were born into those families. They feel, and those people feel they're better than you. They feel that you're nothing, that you're irrelevant. That's a corporation that pays them a humble check. That's all they're doing. They're doing it for a check. The people that are lying to you and murdering you in your media, all of your media has killed you on purpose for their check they know it's a lie what they're telling you they told you it was it was not harmful it was like a banana it was like a potato chip it was like walking in the sunshine like getting on an airplane or climbing mountains these are blatant lies unbelievable lies easy to disprove lies radiation is everywhere and that is good for you it's easy to disprove every one of those lies but they are what led us to the kooky trouble that we are in. They are the reasons. Besides the fact that you don't do your homework. That you don't get in there, hold them accountable. That you don't conceive that that has to be done. The headlines you're looking at are in the, the actual scope are just insignificant. They're not the actual numbers or anywhere close to it. But they, they, do, they do allow you to start understanding and building a picture of what, what is really truly going on. I mean, you're, you're being told even today that it's like a banana, that the man-made radiation, the dirty bombs... The stuff you terrify the terrorists are going to get is like a banana. They're doing that to deceive you and to rob you and your country and to destroy your health and to kill you off in increments over decades. You know something else? 15 kilometers around the average nuclear power plant is six times more breast cancer. Six. Six times more breast cancer, up to 90% more child deadly killer leukemias. But they show up at the very dirty extreme because 1800 diseases show up before cancer. And so they like to try to knock everybody down and say, well, I don't see everybody dying from cancer, data, you kooky conspiracy theorists. How about Alzheimer's and dementia and autism? diabetes if you're gonna look for damage from a nuclear fallout you look for diabetes you look for heart liver lung respiratory pituitary adrenaline gland problems the 1800 manifestations we know from animal studies all the animals died in all the studies no animal has ever been cured the death of the pacific so radioactive insects are spreading. We've seen this in Hanford where a hot fruit fly with radioactive material on its leg, a fruit fly's leg was hot and they had to evacuate the lunchrooms, the cafeterias at Hanford. These are documented things about radiation. Who's to blame for radioactive fish? Who's to blame for the death of the Pacific? The nuclear industry, everybody involved in it. The nuclear lobbyists, the pro-nuclear pundits, 
the pro-nuclear universities in particular, your universities that are teaching nuclear, particularly nuclear medicine, particularly chemotherapy with nuclear radiation from man-made ionizing radiation. None of these people are naive. None of these people thinks it's like a banana and a potato chip for walking in sunshine. But they will all tell you that when asked by the media to protect their mass killing machine. They couldn't get a job in the real world, or maybe they could, but they didn't want it. They wanted that job, where everything is kept secret because everything is a lie. You keep it secret, you have all these terrorist laws, so you won't look at it, and they'll put you on a watch list and then censor you if you ever speak out. Nuclear waste, 30 million tons of nuclear waste. There's nothing, that's just a mound of what happened down there. They're radiating water into the Pacific. Twelve million yen to censor Twitter. And they're burning debris. They're burning the radioactive material on top of everything else. Each second is a dirty bomb. How can you morally sit there and allow them to do this? How can this entire planet sit back and allow this to happen? How can our media and our universities sit, be out there now, ban, going, blocking fucking airports? Blocking everybody from getting home to their families because we won't let the immigrants they created into the country because we want to get them out of their country to fuck up their country. We don't want to rebuild our country. We don't want to stop the wars in that country. We want to bring them here and fuck you over. That's all that's about. That's it. That's, it. that's what it's all about. Not about salvaging the company, bringing refugees here. You don't bring fucking people here. Right? You arrest the war criminals and you fucking rebuild that country. If you speak out about it, it's easy. They just, no one's going to defend you with power. There's no celebrity going to come out there and stand tall before the man. There's no prosecutor going to become indignant and say, this is an outrage. This is a crime. We got to go after the people that set these victims up, that smeared these good people. These upstanding citizens who made a stand. You don't victimize them and prosecute them. That's what they do to us. That's what they've done to me, isn't it? Twice in a row, arrested. How dare you call a lawyer a lawyer? How fucking dare you, Dana? How fucking dare you, Dana? Call a lawyer, show the lie, and call a lawyer's lawyer. How fucking dare you, Dana? That's what they've done. That's what they said. He smeared me in the media. How dare Dana call that liar a fucking liar? Nobody defended me. Everybody said the liar wasn't a liar. Even though I produce hours and hours and hours. Now I have a gag order where I can't even defend myself for the next three years. Three gag, or gag orders for calling liars liars. Media come out and demonize me, not the lawyers. Media didn't question the lawyers. Media didn't say, hey, you know, yeah, they said it was like a banana and it's not, and Buddy probably got a few good points. He said, he's a fucking demon. That's what they said about me. The biggest medias in Canada and Japan for telling you the truth. Gunnison tells you the truth, and then he fucking lies about the fuel pulls. And he used to make them. He used to make the assemblies for the fuel pulls, and he comes out and lies about the fuel pull, but then comes out and tells you the truth like that. Trying to control you. Trying to manipulate you. And then the people that were feeding you them 
with such vigor, right? And defending him, knew he was a liar. Assimilated themselves into the movement and kept pushing Gunnarsson down everybody's throat. But Gunnarsson was a known lawyer and won't give it up. Same as Caldecott, same as Christopher Busby. They all done it. I mean, Busby said the jet streams weren't real. Caldecott said Unit 3 had a fuel pool above it when the fucking billing is gone. And the fuel pools are up high in the billing. What we're seeing right now is the death of the Pacific Ocean. These are pictures I've taken on the expeditions. This is why life in the tidal pools, look at it. Now that spot and this spot are the same spot. These are only small spots. It's a narrow channel. It's well known. It's one of the most famous spots in North America. It's called Louise Narrows. This is what it looked like pre-Fukushima. Now this is what it looked like when I went there. The death of the Pacific Ocean now is in full swing. All the whales are emaciated. I can't bring up the external desktop for some reason. You see the chart behind me? Those arrows are, are the expeditions that I've taken. You can find it all at the nuclear proctologist. And this is what it means. It means out of the 7,000 species here in Louise Narrows, where I went to, this is my picture, the 7,000 species over there are missing. And so when e, &E News has this headline, government declares disaster over diseased and dying fish, a sudden unexpected large decrease in population. What do you see here? These are authentic pictures before and after the same spot in British Columbia, Canada. Once again, it's all available up at the nuclear proctologist, very high quality. And I'm a shitty photographer, by the way, and I fuck up. 260 days, 15,000 miles, but there is enough clean pictures, good pictures, dear. And even the bad pictures, I posted it because otherwise everybody would say, oh, he's hiding fucking shit because he didn't post picture this and picture that. Because your pictures are all full of metadata. If there's a picture missing, they come out and say, oh, he didn't post a picture. Well, the reason I didn't post a picture might have been because it was fucking blurry. But they're going to say, oh, he didn't post it because it was full of life. Dana's hiding it on you. Here's the proof. So I'm forced to upload even the worst picture I got. Most blurriest picture I got. I got to upload it. Or these fucking maniacs in the nuclear industry are going to come out and accuse me of trying to hide something when that's patently absurd. I'm the only person to ever... I'm the last expedition. I'm the very last expedition to do the coastline of British Columbia species count. Right? We are the last expedition. And if we don't go back out, and if we do go back out, we'll still be the last expedition. But so far, nobody's went out and done a species count in the last six years, only on me. And this is why, because they're all missing. Do you get it yet? They're all missing. All the species are missing. These are the same places, but a six, seven, eight year gap between when these pictures are all available on the internet of a pre-Fukushima of Louise Narrows, formerly known, or Haida Gwaii, formerly known as the Queen Charlotte Islands in British Columbia, Canada. You'll find a couple of algaes, but the species are gone. If those couple of algaes that are left on the beach there go, there'll be nothing left. It'll be empty. Instead, it's supposed to be up to 7,000 species that are residential, but there's 4 million species in the Pacific Ocean. So the headlines of species disappearing, population mass, uh, emaciated and dying, are not fables. Let me burn through some of that. There's no diversity, no colors, no life. There's no reason to go there anymore. 
That's a fact. That's a fact. Death in the Pacific Ocean. We see the mass starvation of whales, particularly on the West Coast in the last number of years. And that they're all emaciated. And that they're out there lying about the killer whales, saying the killer whales are dependent upon salmon. But if you look up killer whales' diet, uh, they eat fucking otters, they eat birds, they eat seals, of course, they eat sea lions. We all know this. But so why are they out there saying they survive on salmon when that's a fucking lie? Because they're desperate to cover it up. They can't change the extinction, but they're trying. Believe one of the orcas that calls Washington Waters home has died, and now her calf is in danger. As King 5's Glenn Farley reports, this latest loss now leaves us with as few as 80 whales. Washington's orcas belong to families. Scientists call them pods, and those pods have letters, J, K, and L. And this is J-Pod and Happier Times, as seen from Sky King swimming in the San Juans a few years ago. Like highly visible fingerprints, orcas are easily identified by the distinctive patterns on their backs, referred to as saddle patches. And this month, a key member of J-Pod seemed to disappear. And it's not the first loss this year. Well, I am alarmed. I've seen the necropsy reports from J-32. Ken Balcom has studied these whales, including their ability to reproduce for decades. He's with the Center for Whale Research. This is far more sinister, where we're losing reproductive females and their babies uh you know when you when you don't reproduce anymore you don't have a population the news while not confirmed by a carcass might as well be this is the last picture of j28 taken by balcom on october 2nd along with her youngest calf j54 a male he says the whales are emaciated underweight underfed and the short supply of the whale's natural prey chinook salmon forced the mother the fuck are they talking about natural prey? The whales eat everything, including birds that are all gone. Half a million of these birds. Whales are dying everywhere. The chances of finding two de dead whales in one area are astronomical. So what's the chances of finding that many? It's one of the biggest mysteries Alaska has seen in some time. What caused hundreds of thousands of seabirds to wash up on our shores? And hundreds of thousands? Maxwell tells us there's another mystery tonight. Why the birds are no longer turning up in droves. And they're common birds that showed up on the uh, hay flats up in Palmer. Scientists say the die-off has slowed. These birds are probably likely following the Kinnick River. But research into what caused it is going full speed. And many of the birds, when we perform the necropsies, they actually have empty stomachs, so we're not finding any food. They know the birds are... St now, scientists say as many as half a million murs died. The most recent in mid-February, up to 8,000 showed up on the shores of Lake Iliamna. Which is way inland in Alaska. This is really terrifying stuff. 337 in one spot when you're normally lucky. Like finding two in one spot is astronomical odds. Finding 337 and then the world doesn't freak out. But yet, if you find a whale on the beach, you'll see a big headline, but you don't remind you of this one. Why? If you see a dead whale anywhere in British Columbia, Canada, there's a big freak out in all the media, but none of them will go back and remind you of that recently. Birds are banning their eggs, seals and sea lions showing up in shops, emaciated, emaciated, starving to death. Most hor horrifying, this is the most horrifying of, of words imaginable. Whales dying everywhere. Just like dropping dead everywhere. It's really something. These are all, these are all, this is what a polar bear should look like. And this is what they're looking like. Half a million birds is the biggest die off we've ever seen. Uh, all the polar bears in the north are are in distress. But even though they say there's lots of food, they also, I'm not going to play it right now, but they talk about that stuff. 
whales and porpoises washing up on the beaches, the strange animals. Mind blowing is a a polite way of putting it. It's unprecedented. Every bird they see is starving to death. And so it's starving to death because when the bird comes to shore, there's nothing on the shore, like on your right. See? It's naked. When the bird comes to shore, instead of being on the left, it's like it is on the right. These are pictures I took on the expeditions. That's all available up at the nuclearproctologist.org. This is really something. This is really frightening. Now we're seeing the, the absolute collapse of the Pacific Ocean. But those birds are dying because there's nothing, a sh like on the left, they would come ashore, fly along, they would see all those colors. They would fly along, they would see all that life, they would come down and eat. But they fly along, they can't find anything to come down, and there's still nothing there to eat. Like on that beach, if I was to have to survive, I would starve to death. I might live for a while, but I would starve to death eventually because there's nothing there. That is inconceivable. We're talking about a Pacific Ocean. Look at the right-hand side. Low tide, you can... No matter where you go, you should be able to fucking get all you want to eat in 10 minutes or less. Even if you got 10 people there, you should have all the food you ever wanted in 10 minutes or less. We don't... We think, you know... Okay, that's the fallout from Noah. It's only based upon a couple of days' release. It's not based upon... The actual meltdowns is not based upon the reactor cores uh, that are stored in the buildings for a decade. To ten, say, each building got around five reactor cores or more worth of fuel in the building. Because that's because that's how twisted these people are. They knew if they have an accident, they would lose everything. You know how dangerous it is. You give them billions of dollars a year for each plant for security. The nuclear buildings in Japan, each one of them are, are several billion dollars. I'm sorry, it's a billion dollars a year at least going into the building. Let's come back over and think about why the Pacific now... It goes up into the jet streams, and then you have Norwegian institutions like the Norwegian Institute showing you the disposition. So think about this disposition where it's all the way across the Pacific, all the way, continuous line across North America, continuous line across the Atlantic, and a continuous line back home again. Now, they knew this from the fire balloons within several days, three or four days, they made it all over North America, including Canada, of course, and Mexico. Because the jet streams are actually real. Despite what Christopher Busby tells you, these are actually legitimate. The simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world from the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The simulation was created by a group of researchers of, at the University of Tokyo and Kyushu University and released on Wednesday. That simulation is based on the scenario in which contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters into the air. It was then carried by westerly winds and spread over the Pacific Ocean. The images indicate that on the fourth day after the being, being vented, the substances reached the west coast of the United States and on the, on the... Let me come back to that. Look how, this is from the university in Japan after, just after the accident, but look on TV, but look how the plume has covered the entire Pacific Ocean. I want you to just focus on that, understand that. Appreciate that that is not 
based upon any rational model. That is only based upon a tiny emitted, what they say, venting. But you couldn't vent something because it detonated. So when it detonated, it blew up all the abilities to vent it. It blew up all the abilities for power to run anything. But so the model is only based up on a tiny amount, a couple of pounds. Literally, that's all it's basically based upon. Say five kilograms or something like that. But because radiation is so deadly, because there's so much of it per gram when it's refined this way. Because in, like in a gram of, say, potassium-40, natural, uh, what they call radiation, but it's actually just a emitter, but it's not a harmful emitter. Like potassium-40 is in your food, your clothing, everywhere. Potassium-40 is about 160,000 atoms that are considered emitters. The rest of it is just material that are not emitters. It's a gram. You eat that, it's harmless. But man-made... Each of those atoms, and there's 88 times 78 billion. So there's 78 billion in a curry, a man-made, and there's 88 curries in a gram of man-made versus 160 of natural, harmless stuff, and a material in a gram of natural material like potassium-40. So a gram of man-made, a single atom, can give you an autoimmune deficiency long before a cancer shows up. The atom, once it goes in your body, your body has never encountered it before. So it sequesters in your muscles, your organs. It does the same thing to animals and, and small life, microscopic life. We're talking about something so tiny, you can put two million on the head of a needle, but you can't even see it. But a single one of those two million atoms is enough to cause autoimmune deficiencies. Fish don't generally live long enough to get cancer. Cancer is usually 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So it attacks their system, weakens their system. They're being eaten by bigger fish. That's how that food chain works, right? Phytoplankton is ate by the pods and the bigger, little bigger creatures. Till you get up to something we can actually see with our eyes. Like the invertebrates without the backbones, there's around 6,500 holly or visible species just here in British Columbia of those alone without the backbone, like shrimp, that are the major source for the conversion of the food chain. And the stuff that's eating that is birds and krill and shrimps and prawns and anchovies, and sardines and herring and squid. Blah, blah, blah. These are all predicated upon the smallest ones. Okay, so the plume covers the entire width of the Pacific and then length of the Pacific, and it's still coming out. It doesn't stop coming out of Japan. It never stopped coming out. The model is only based upon a little tiny bit. So the idea is we know about pollution. We know about air pollution. We know about the transport of it. We have all these studies showing us they're real. So therefore, when we see the Norwegian Institute of Air Research, we know, we know that it's valid because we know about... We know... I screwed up that quick. We, we, we know that there's all these different studies. Right? And so warns French to shut their pie hole. Top NRC official in Japan should be arrested, convicted, definitely should be stripped immediately, right now. Police should, instead of monitoring me all day, all night, 24 hours a day, and stopping people from donating or helping me, go down and arrest that guy. Right? He fucking covered it up. No. We got to destroy Dana Durnford for saying that to protect that fucker who lied and destroyed our planet and murdered us to protect a job and a corporation and shareholders. Look, the plume covers the entire Pacific all the way to the jet streams, all the way to the ocean floor. And so it pulses out, say it pulses out that far or five feet or one foot, but there's 600 million atoms of it per liter. 
You only need one atom per liter to radiate everything in the Pacific Ocean. You don't need 600 million atoms of man-made stuff to radiate the Pacific. And by proxy, you don't need that stuff mount to radiate North America or the Atlantic. So the plume, once it covers everything, think about your cat, your neighbor's cat coming in and pissing over everything in your country. Going to flying, or it's a better way of doing it. Think about crop dusters and there's a big farmer's field and all of a sudden the crop duster changes course now he goes through your community and instead of crop dusting the field all day he spends all day crop dusting the community and he goes back to the hangar and gets more chemicals and goes out and he crop dusts the kids on their way home from school and then he runs out of uh, material he goes back and fills up and flies back and he does that all day every day day in day out but he doesn't bother crop dusting his field anymore. He just radiates your, your crop dust your community over and over. That's all that is. That's what you're looking at. That's why you got to understand it. That's why you got to fucking deal with it. That's why you got to grow up. That's why you got to gut up. That's why you got to be somebody. That's why you got to make a fucking stand. That's why you got to get fucking busy. That's why you got to get educated. You might say, oh, it's overwhelming. Well, grow the fuck up. And get busy. You're not fucking stupid. Don't look at me and you're here today and tell me you're too stupid to play a part. Don't tell me you're too insignificant to play a fucking part. Don't tell me you're incapable. Don't tell me any of that. If you found your way here, you're not incapable. If you found your way here, you're not fucking naive. If you found your way here, you can make a difference. Oh, Danny, I'm just one person. How can I make a difference? I'm just one person. Right? Good song. Nice fantasy. Just like the one you're living right now. Because you won't do nothing. Sit there and allow that to happen to your children, your friends, and your families. And let the handful of people continue with the law. Let your institutions, your universities... Your fucking media, get away with it. Just a handful of people that talk about it are all lying to you and you can't have a conversation. The minute you fucking challenge these people. Fushima fallout on your vegetation. Do you get what that friggin' means? Not only in your vegetation, it's in your drinking water. You're putting it on your vegetation across the ocean in a straight line, the very first one. But it didn't stop coming out of there, right? Force uh, forecast changed to cesium 137, I think, or 134, right? To xenon 133 after a short period of time. It's like americium 239 only lasts like. 2.3 days and then it changes the fucking plutonium 239 which lasts for 29,000 fucking years birth defects deaths in the west coast like we're all in this together we're, we're all on our back we're all in this fight and if you're not willing to fight you gotta support or help or learn, at least learn what to do. Learn how to defend yourself. Learn who the lawyers are. Learn how to fight back. Learn how to do moral and ethical things. Because you're going to need that in the next couple of years. Like you can't even conceive. You are going to need to learn skills. Because we're talking about an extinction event. And you can't hide this much longer. You can't hide it. You can try to hide it, but you can't hide it. Right? It never stops coming out of Japan. That never stops. It just never stops. Now it's hitting North America over there. And there it is. The entire Pacific in a few days. Less than a few days. You can see the dates at the top of the page. In less than a week, the Pacific is done. 
It didn't need to happen over and over like it's been doing. But it's invisible. When you can't see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. And you should use that sentence just like I say it. It's perfect. Everything I say is 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 just that evolution of covering the topic and coming up with that cliche. It's a good cliche. Right? It sums it up. The model is nowhere near accurate, but it's a model. It's, it doesn't tell you all the thousands of radioactive isotopes, but it tells you a couple. And it shows you the enormity of what just a couple means. It shows you the enormity of what just a few kilogram means versus the millions of pounds. Five or six reactor cores per building, gone. See, the thing with me is you can't beat my narrative. The thing with me is you can't beat down my narrative. You can't disprove a single fucking piece of my narrative. It's bulletproof. It's rock solid. It's the one we're stuck with now. It's the defining narrative. It's reality. There's no middle ground. I don't choose a, a polite, nice way to go about it. I just talk about the truth. What do you... You come here and listen or not, I'm gonna just going to keep doing it. Because people will come and listen. And people will learn. And will motivate people to kill this fucking industry in increments of ones if we got to. But ultimately, we got to. And so eventually we will. And it's because... Should it... Like, people have told us for decades to get the fuck busy and do exactly what we're doing right now. Kill this industry. But we ignored it. And now it's killed us, and now we're fighting back. But at least we're trying. At least we're fighting. At least we're in the fight. At least we're willing to fucking make Earth's last stand. Because this is Earth's last stand. Those headlines this week, the death of the Pacific Ocean, collapse of the population. It's something we've been telling you for a few years straight because of Japan. So the red is people died from that debris. And the yellow is the people missing from that debris. That's why they're missing and dead and everything else. The buildings started blowing up. That's unit two, but that's a comparison of what unit three should look like. Right? That's unit three over there. That's unit two. Same building. I just want you to understand that, though. I want you to appreciate how bad this really is. If it was just a single building, we are in so much trouble because you're talking five or six reactor cores per building. But even if it wasn't that, even if it was just a single reactor core like Chernobyl, which that's what Chernobyl... Chernobyl was one-third the size of this building. The reactor core was one-third the size and a 30% meltdown, compared, allegedly, compared to this building. These buildings are 190 feet high. They're 150, well, they were, 150 feet wide. And they showed you this pool in order to, to manipulate you, right? They came out in the media and showed you that pool. They didn't bother showing you the picture I showed you that I put alongside of this. There's BBC fucking you. Here's Canada, CBC, telling you a beautiful pool over there is inside the building. So you know you're in trouble when your media, including RT, done it to you. Can't trust any of it, including TEPCO, showing you a beautiful pool with a derelict building right alongside of it. So blatant the air. Motherboard physics.org. The very people you turn to, Nuclear Engineering International, one of the biggest sites, showing you a beautiful fuel pool in a destroyed building. Seth Dorn showing you, claiming he's inside of the building right here up high in the building where the fuel pools were too the fuel pools were right up high in the building these are the lies these are the official pictures okay we, we know your rad project model it out we know rain with 20 million particles per liter, per liter. 
also fell on the ocean, not just America. We know 55 is an evacuation zone. We know that they're going to continue to hide it until we fucking lynch them all or we rise up and come out and destroy it or they kill us. It's us against them. It's not them trying, let's get them to do something. It's us against them. They're determined to kill you. They've already demonstrated they fucking hate you. They've already demonstrated they got a job. They're not going to protect you. Right? They haven't come out and fought for your, for the right to talk about this. They haven't come out and defended people like me. They have defended the nuclear industry lawyers. They, they come out and said, no, no, it's like a banana and this potato chip is walking in the sunshine. It can't hurt you. And your media is your biggest fucking enemy. Your media is your fucking enemy. They're your enemy. Your university is your enemy. That's your fucking enemy. They didn't come out and counter these crazies out there. They didn't come out and say, hey, people are lying. Nuclear is not like a banana. It's that fucking simple. Right? Canada government went out there, showed the plumes and hid it away. It got leaked out by people having pains of conscience. They're burning it everywhere. They're collecting up 30 million bags. Because it's actually not like a banana. Right? It's that simple. University comes out and say, well, it's not like a banana because that's why they're collecting 30 million one-ton bags. Then, then we got something we can take to people and say, look, see? It's not like a banana. But we don't got no university willing to do that. We don't, and if they are, we got to be highly suspect. Any university, any media, any academic now that speaks out, where the fuck were you for the last six years? Right? Next year, be where were you for the last seven years? Year after, where, and it's going to be worse. So they're going to have to come out at some point. Right? Hence, Ernie Gunnarsson. Hence, Helen Calica. Hence, Christopher Busby. That was their first kick at the can. You think they're going to lose their ability to keep bringing out these lying sacks of shit? These disgusting, manipulative fucking freaks? These cowards? These traitors? These anti-fucking-life maggots? These parasites? We gave them every chance. These, these fucks? We gave them everything they ever asked for. We put them on pedestals. We put them up in the media. And they fucked us. Every chance they got, just fucked us. No matter what we do, they fuck us. They lie to us, murder us, and pretend that we're fucking too eager and too insignificant to care about, to worry about, to inform, to let make their own decisions. Based upon facts. Oh, you gotta have nuclear... Because you can't, because wind and toy, wind and solar can't do it. You have a fucking coal can, an oil can, but coal is everywhere. The planet's used to it. You're not going to get a suck in an atom of coal and get a cancer. If you live right alongside a coal plant, you're a fucking idiot. You deserve to get sick. You're a moron. Put your coal plant somewhere else. Move somewhere else. Let the coal plant do the job. Oh, Dana, people get fucking sick from cold because you live right along so because you're an idiot. After 20 years of drinking anything, Coca-Cola, well, Coca-Cola, don't even start GMO, aspartame and everything else. No, it's time to take back this planet, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to take back this planet. No more games. It's time to go to war against these fucking retards that think they're going to destroy our planet without no blowback do you think they're gonna have a normal fucking life by destroying my planet good for you you live that fantasy go ahead enjoy it i can assure you it's not true you're no you none of you fuckers that earth are lying right now will see your future this planet is going to come looking for you whether i exist or not you kill the pacific ocean and people are starting to work it out Hugs for everybody. We'll figure out what's going on with the computer and try to get you back in tomorrow for the next stream. 
I just spent all week in ripping everything apart, putting it all back together to try to get the studio, which was my bedroom. Now my bed is in my living room. And by the way, you know, we raised 60 bucks last year, which is awesome, but we do need to raise some real money to do the things that I need to do to have the equipment, to have the ability, to have that latitude or any freedom whatsoever. I, I need like 20,000 a month at least to accomplish anything that I would like to accomplish. I can keep going like I'm doing. But it'd be nice if I can raise a thousand a month or 2,000 a month, like to go fuel up the, the boat is completely empty. I can't even put any gas in the boat. I got zero money. We got it all burnt up on this, being able to, so we can do this. And we are just, we are in business every day that we can, right? We're doing good, but we still got to do better. Hugs for everybody. Please donate, you'll find links below. I'm only asking because I have to. If I don't, it'll never happen, right? I got to ask. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.